cards. These are a gimmick that have appeared numerous times throughout the toy lines of Tokusatsu shows, but it wasn't until 2013 where Power Rangers implemented them in full force. Cards have been made for Power Rangers in the past, even back to the Mighty Morphin days, but with Power Rangers Mega Force, the cards were everywhere. In the show, they were used to summon everything in the Rangers' arsenal, from weapons, to zords, to even their attacks. And to reflect that, Bandai America included them in nearly every single toy released for the show in 2013. Welcome back to Power Month here on Toku Topics. Today is the 20th day of the month, and that means we are talking about Power Rangers Megaforce and how to play the action card game. The centerpiece of this toy line was the deluxe Gosei Morpher. This item included 10 cards to get your collection started, and to showcase the features of the Morpher. Half the cards were Megaforce based, and included a Change, Weapon, Zord, Megazord, and Attack card, with the rest being cards of legendary Red Rangers in celebration of the 20th anniversary of the franchise, including Wild Force, Ninja Storm, SPD, Mystic Force, and Jungle Fury. While most of the Megaforce cards included generic sounds, the legendary cards were able to be recognized by the Morpher by both season name and ranger color. A feature like this was something that mixed the card gimmick given to Megaforce by the Gosager footage, along with being a great way to see the franchise's anniversary being used to expand the cards to their full extent, though one can only wonder how cool it would have been to see these cards being used in the show to turn into past rangers. The Gosei Morpher toy featured three modes that could be switched between with the control on the back. First was Demo Mode, which was the default when the Morpher was sitting on the shelves in the store, where every card used in this mode would activate the sound, Go Go Megaforce. Then of course was the main On Mode, in which the full card reader was active for the nearly 180 sounds present inside. To unlock these, that's where the action card game came in. Where there's cards, there's starter decks and booster packs to follow. Launched around the premiere of Megaforce in the spring of 2013 was Series 1 of the Power Rangers ACG Rise of Heroes. Featuring characters from Power Rangers Megaforce, Samurai, Super Samurai, RPM, and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, this was the main way that the sounds on the Gosei Morpher were unlocked. The Series 1 starter deck included 40 cards for Power Rangers Megaforce and Samurai, with 10 of them being duplicates of the main 5 members of each team to give a friend a way to start their own deck. Also included in the deck was the game manual for version 1 of the game, the game mat, and dice. While this starter deck always included the same cards, the booster packs did not. These were sold with 10 random cards in each pack, though it was a guarantee to get a number of the different types present in each set, with there being commons and rares, designated by the symbol in the corner of the card, and each pack included one special card in the back that was either a silver foil super rare or a gold foil ultra rare card. This introduced the different types of playable cards as well, rangers, villains, zords, and megazords, each with their own purpose to the actual card game. Using the game map from the starter deck and a number of series 1 and early promo cards, here's how the game was played. The first step is to build a deck. The official rules stated in the manual show that a deck of 30 cards with no more than 3 copies of a particular card is needed to play. Villain decks can also be created with the same rules, but these decks must only contain villain cards and not be mixed with other card types. After shuffling up the cards, players shake hands and draw 5 cards from their decks to start. The goal of the game is to leave your opponent with 0 cards in their deck area. If this happens to both players, it's a tie. Now each card has a number of important pieces of info on them. The side barcode is used for the Gosei Morpher to make a sound, the top barcode is used for the action card game app which we'll get to shortly, the other side includes a group of power levels which will also be important, and then below the art and name of the card is a number of important pieces of information including special effects, damages, abilities, and costs that all factor into the turns. Each turn goes like this. Start. Each player draws two cards from their decks. Summon. You play a ranger, villain, or support card from your hand into the battle area at the same time as the other player, or choose not to play a card. If a card is played, that player must pay the cost present on the card. For example, with a card of a damage of 1, 
the one card from their hand must be moved to the discard area of the mat, or grabbed from the training area of the mat if a card is present there. Extra Summon Next, a player may choose to play a more powerful Zord or Megazord card on top of the card already in the battle area, though you don't have to. And just as in the last step, if a card is played here, the player takes the damage associated with that card. The final step in each turn is battle. Now it's time to fight. The outcome here depends on what scenario is ongoing. If only one player has a card in the battle area, then the damage indicated on said card is inflicted on the opponent. However, this damage is applied a second time to the opponent as a result of them not playing a card. However, in most cases there are cards in play from both players, so a judgement must occur. This is achieved by one of three possible methods, whichever one that the players want, to determine the power level present on the cards that will be compared. Method 1 is using the included dice ranging from 1 to 6 that matches up to the power levels on the card. Method 2 is with the deluxe Go Say More for Toy. This is where the final mode of that toy comes in. When switched to TCG mode on the back and a card is placed in, Go Say will say a random power level, which is then what is used to decide the outcome of the match. Using the Go Say Morpher can also activate special effects of the cards, though the dice option cannot. These are present on the bottom of the game map and also in the game manual, but don't come into effect with the dice or the next method. Method 3 is the action card game app. This was used as part of the marketing strategy by Bandai America for the game that ranged from the website for the toys to this app, which allowed for each card to be scanned in a short animated clip or a clip from the show to be played after each one. This app had a game mode as well that would read a power level after the clip for the purposes of judgment. Once the judgment has been decided by one of these methods and we have power levels to compare, there is a chance to turn the results with an assist. An assist can only be implemented using cards in the player's training area. So if there are cards there, a player may use as many as they wish to add to the assist value of the card in play. So if a judgment determines that a card is playing at power level 2, but cards with an assist value of 3 are implemented, then the card will now play at power level 5. If each player has more than one assist card that can be played, the one with the lower power level from the judgment gets to decide to play an assist or not first. Now it's the showdown. With the power levels of each card finalized, the one with the higher level will win the battle. If a power level is max, the card wins automatically, unless the other player's is also a max. If there's a tie, then both players must re-perform a judgement method and assist opportunity until there is a winner of the match. The final move of a round is to deal damage to the loser. Here, the damage the opponent will take is indicated on the winner's card, which is then implemented. At this point, the chance for extra damage must also be checked. This is accomplished with the rock paper scissors symbol in the corner of every card. If the winner of the battle also wins rock paper scissors, then damage is dealt to the loser a second time, but this only happens if the winner is the same in both competitions. Nothing occurs if the winner of the battle loses or ties rock paper scissors. From here, steps 1 through 4 are repeated in multiple rounds until a player runs out of cards in their deck. These are the basic rules for playing the Power Rangers action card game, but there are a number of ability symbols and other rules that can come into play that changes up the flow of these steps a little bit. As the toyline expanded, so did the options for cards to be added to decks as well, as opportunities for fans to add their favorite rangers, villains, and zords from the franchise to their collections and the game. Series 2 of the action card game, Guardians of Justice, introduced In Space, Lightspeed Rescue, Ninja Storm, SPD, and Mystic Force as options for seasons, as well as some of the first support cards to be released for the line. Series 3 will release with another version of the starter deck and the manual for version 2.0 of the card game. This series introduced Zeo, In Space, Lost Galaxy, Time Force, Dino Thunder, and Jungle Fury to the game, as well as cards for Mega Force's Ultra Mode. Notable cards from this series included ones that featured Sentai-only members from Go Ranger and Sun Vulcan on the card art as an easter egg for fans. As for the rules in version 2, the game manuals are mostly identical besides a couple of graphic changes up until the timing of effects page, which introduces the additional Judgment, Assist, Showdown, Summon Step, and Extra Summon Step effects. There were also new types of cards in Series 3, with the new Ranger slash Villain cards and Team cards. Series 4 introduced the remaining seasons to the game, as well as some slight changes to the rules of the game that were explained in the promo pamphlet included in the back of each booster pack. These additions were the new ability symbol, Unite, and the Enhancement ability. This series also added to the types of cards, brand new Dual Ranger cards, which didn't really change the mechanics of the game, but just allowed for more diverse card art. With these additions, 
They would also be the final additions to the game. A Series 5 was in development to unlock the rest of the sounds from the Ghost A Morpher toy, but was cancelled. However, some of these cards did get a release in an alternate Series 5, released only in Europe, and therefore are quite rare. There were also some plans to keep the cards continuing with Super Mega Force in 2014, that would have included some sort of unknown functionality to add Ranger Keys into the game. This was scheduled to occur with a re-release of the Ghost A Morpher that year, but both were scrapped. This series also would have introduced sideway facing cards for the first time. While the card game would go on to last for only 4 series in the US and 5 in Europe, this led to a wide collection of cards from every season of Power Rangers at the time that could be put up against each other in the card game, used in the app, used in the Ghost A Morpher, and of course collected for their wider range of artwork taken from cards from Japan or photoshopped together from screenshots just for these cards. Ever since then, Bandai has never really attempted cards in either Sentai or Power Rangers ever again, but it's an idea that definitely had potential back then and still can today. Let me know down in the comments below, did you play or collect the Power Rangers action card game during Megaforce? Was it never really your thing? Be sure to follow me on Twitter at LivingRangerKey or at LightningFigPR and I'll see you all next time. To wrap up this video, I'd like to thank my $5 and above patrons, Jurassic Samurai, Robert Browning, Static Thunder, Brendan Oberland, Maji Yellow, MCPC Studios, Comics 1017, James Darty, Eric Berry, Matthew Thorne, Josh Landry, CBT Tesla, Cross SCV, Caboose Ed, Socket Monsters, Anthony Love, Daniel Pika, Hella Geo, Thrasher, Jesus Prime, Uni Warrior Thomas, and Lewis Carnes. You can support Toku Topics for as little as $1 a month on my Patreon, linked in the description below.